Hello everybody, welcome to the Personal Excellence Web Lectures. I'm Celeste and today's topic is a topic that is very close to my heart, which is how to deal with critical people. Now, in the course of running uh, my business and running PE, personalexcellence.co, which is my personal development site, I do often face quite a lot of critical people. And these critical people vary quite a fair bit. Sometimes they can be negative people and they have certain negative intentions and they really just want to put people down. So or when they are doing that, sometimes they can use pretty hurtful comments, um, some flaming comments, uh, and some derogatory comments as well. And these people can be energy suckers and um, they are not a good uh, group to be with. Sometimes the critical people may be people with genuinely good intentions. They have good feedback to share. Uh, they have good observations as well. But the way they put their comments across can sometimes sound quite tactless and insensitive, perhaps because um, they are not sure how to um, provide criticism in a constructive manner and in the process coming across as tactful, blunt, unwelcoming. And I have found that um, it is important to learn to deal with critical people because everyone is there in life for a reason. And I have found that there is always something to learn from everybody. And it can be friends, it can be enemies, it can be strangers, it can be acquaintances. And it's really up to us to learn what is that lesson that we can learn from each of these person. So with today's web lecture on how to deal with critical people, I hope you can pick up some useful tips on how to deal with them. Uh, these tips have been tried and tested by myself. I have um, devised these tips after uh, periods of dealing with such people and then really learning how to uh, effectively handle them. I also have a web lecture which is on how to uh, give constructive criticism. So you can check that out as well if you are someone uh, who wants to improve the way you give feedback to others so that they can be better received by other people. And you can find them on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Celestine Chua. And look for the lecture with the topic that says how to give constructive criticism. So in today's web lecture, I'll be giving you eight helpful ways on dealing with critical people. So let us um, now move to the first tip or the first way, which is not to take things personally. Okay, so um, definitely the most important because when you're dealing with critical people, they do have a tendency to uh, lash out with certain comments. They may not be relevant to what the discussion is about. They can also give um, comments that can be quite hurtful and um, quite attacking. So the first and most basic rule is not to take things personally because sometimes it's possible that the person had a bad day okay, and you just didn't know. Maybe um, the person uh, lost his or her pet. Maybe the person got into a car accident. Maybe the person was criticized or uh, scolded by someone else for no reason. And as a result, uh, when the person is talking to you or sharing feedback with you, those negative energy may have um, sort of just uh, came true from those comments. And those negative energy may be what he or she received from others during the day. So don't take things personally because it's not really about you. It may just well be that person himself or herself. And there can sometimes be people who have a knack for giving um, negative comments or, or very critical sounding tactless comments again and again and again. And when that happens, then you would know that it is definitely not about you and it's more about the other person. Because if the person is always consistently giving such um, feedback with negative energy, then maybe there's something that's pent up or repressed in him or her that's causing him or her to give um, criticism in this manner. 
so definitely don't take things personally. So as I run my business on PE and run my site uh, personalexcellence.co, there are times when I get certain feedback which can be quite hurtful, um, some feedback which can be quite presumptuous, and some feedback which basically make assumptions about who I am and my character. And I basically just learned not to take them personally. I've learned to instead see them for what they are and to really understand the message behind those feedback. Because I think in life, if we are to take everything personally, I think um, basically we'll be just too busy trying to handle or deal with uh, comments that we don't agree with than to really live life. And it is more important that we focus on the bigger picture rather than to always get hung up by every single thing that people say. So it is important. Don't take um, the comments personally. It is better for your well-being for sure. And um, this is also like a key rule in um, living a happy life, I feel. The second tip I have is to objectify the comments and understand the underlying message behind the comments. Okay, so you have the first step, which is not to take things personally. Now moving to the second layer, the second layer now is about objectifying what you receive and understanding what is the underlying message behind that. Because whenever someone gives a comment, that comment comes from a certain place um, and that there's a certain point that a person is trying to drive. So see every single piece of communication to comprise of two parts. The first part is the what. What is the message? Okay. The second part of the communication is the how. How is this message brought across? And I have found that a lot of times people do not know how to bring their messages across in a tactful, sensitive, um, a receptive manner because they have not mastered the how of communication. They don't, they don't know how to communicate people in a way that resonates with them. Um, they don't necessarily have the proper people skills. But just because um, they don't know the how doesn't mean, that, doesn't mean that they don't have a good message underneath. Like they may have a good what. Okay, they may have a good message to drive through, but because of their poor people skills, you know, the fact that they don't know how to bring that message across, the message may just come across as um, negative, bad, something that people just want to dismiss right away. And I have found that it is actually very important to learn to drill down to what is the what of the message rather than getting hung up with the how of the communication. So, for example, let's say um, you have a family member who is very negative and very critical. And um, let's say it's your mom and your mom always says things like, Why are you always so untidy and unorganized? Can't you do something better? Can't you spend more time organizing your room? Can't you put more effort in being a tidy person? Okay, so this comment overall sounds critical and negative. And um, it's partly because the how, the way she presented her comment is just so curt and so in your face, so uh, rude and insensitive. And it is like a immediate tendency for us to just brush it aside and ignore it because the comment was just delivered in such a poor manner. But if we look aside um, the how, the way that it was brought across, and in fact look at the comments, uh, the comment for what they are, we can we might actually see some something that we can learn from. For example, if we objectify those comments that she said, we will find that what she's really trying to bring across is that we can actually become a better person if we work on being more tidy and more organized, that uh, this skill set might well be helpful for us in uh, getting more things done. 
in being more productive, in being a more presentable person. So this is the underlying message that she really wants to drive across, because ultimately, she, I would like to think that she's your mom and she really wants the best for you, and she wouldn't want to put down her baby, and it's really because she doesn't know how to put her points across in a tactful manner. Which then makes the comment come across as so rude. So really learn to objectify the comments and understand the underlying message that、um, they come from. So this is something that I have consistently been working on to get better in. And、um, I found that sometimes the comments may be about something which is not my priority at all. So in that case, I don't pay much attention to those comments. But sometimes there are comments which I think that、um, there is. A, a good point that the person is trying to make, and in those cases, I always learn to sort of tease out what exactly the person is coming from and the underlying message, and then to really apply it thereafter. And this has been incredibly helpful for me in my growth and to become a better person. Okay, the third tip on how to deal with critical people is to really to take. Criticism as a source of honest feedback. Okay, so if I were to give you two scenarios, the first scenario is where you have someone who is blunt but honest. You know what you get when you are with him or her. He or she says what's on his or her mind. Now, I personally wouldn't like to hang out with such a person, especially if the person is always tactless and and rude and demeaning. Um, but let's say this is the first scenario, and you have the second scenario, where there is someone who is always telling you how nice you are, and giving you flattery and comments and trying to please you, but the person is a complete hypocrite, and what he or she says is actually not what he or she thinks, and he or she may、uh, well be going behind your back and always saying things that are bad about you. That、um, are actually totally contradicting to what he or she always says when he's in front of you. So let's say you have these two scenarios only to pick from. Which one would you want? I personally would go with the first one because I can't stand hypocrisy and I can't stand it when people、um, give fake comments or、um, give excessive formalities just for the sake of them rather than out of genuinity. And I, I rather well prefer someone who is direct and、um, straightforward with you, even though it may not be、um, the most pleasant circumstance to be in. It is still better than、uh, someone who is fake. So take the criticism as a source of honest feedback. At least appreciate that the person、uh, has the guts and the honesty to tell you what he or she thinks, rather than. Think that way and then hide it in his or her mind, because whatever feedback that is hidden in the person's mind will never get to you. And if it doesn't get to you, you don't get to learn from it. You don't get to process it. You don't even get to know it. Okay, so I think it is actually better that you know what's on the person's mind, and you can decide what you want to do with that information. Rather than a scenario where the person just keeps it in his or her mind, and you have just no idea what he or she is thinking. So a lot of times,、um, there are people who just、uh, maybe make、uh, flaming comments on my site or you know or on other places, and you know sometimes the comments may not be the best comments out there, but I look at them and I think, hey, at least I know what's on this person's mind. At least this person shared it openly, and I appreciate that. I appreciate the honesty. I mean, I don't appreciate the negativity, but I appreciate the honesty. And in a way, I think it's admirable and it's good. So learn to take、um, feedback, even the negative ones, as a good thing because it is really coming、uh, from a place of openness. Of course, that doesn't mean that you know you should just、uh, let yourself be on the receiving end of all、um, negative criticism, blunt feedback, attackless feedback. 
uh, and you should learn to process them and this is where the other tips come in now. Okay, so moving to the fourth tip on how to deal with critical people, address your discomfort within. Uh, I found that whenever someone feels uncomfortable or feel negative by a certain criticism, it's, it's usually representative of certain things underneath in that person. And this can be something to do with the feedback itself. This can be to do with the way the person presented the feedback. And this can be uh, nothing to do with the feedback, but something to do with uh, something else that's uh, vaguely relevant to the feedback um, that was brought out or, or um, in which the feedback reminded you of something in the past. And uh, for whatever this discomfort is, I found that when you dig in and drill into it, it is actually uh, very, very helpful and tremendous in personal growth. So for example, um, in the past, I would really just dislike it when people just give their feedback in a blunt and curt manner. And when I drew into that, I realized that it's because I just hate it that uh, people are so disrespectful and so tactless and just not having the basic adequate and cultural societal norms, like they're not following that. And when I drew further into it, I realized that it's because um, I'm, in, I'm brought up in the Asian society. I'm Chinese. I am Singaporean. And um, we pretty much uh, conform to the Asian values here. By and large, we are a westernized nation and city, but we also have certain undercurrent Asian values. And in the Asian culture, it is important to learn to be tactful, to always have something positive to say, and to basically conform with the group. And someone who is always out there giving criticism, putting people down, it's just a sore thumb. It's just something that's sticking out of the group and is usually just seen as being a defiant, being disrespectful of others, um, especially if the other people are people who are more senior, who are older. And I found that my discomfort uh, or part of my discomfort is because these people are just not respectful of cultural norms. And I realized that I am partially reacting out of my upbringing, okay, what I deem as proper adequate or proper cultural norms. And it may just well be possible that this is not where the person is coming from. Like maybe the person was brought up in a different country with a different cultural norm where speaking what you think and being direct and honest is the thing to go for. And not saying what's on your mind is being hypocritical. Is negative. It's not being honest. It's not being true to yourself. So we may well have two people with completely good intentions and who want to be um, serving members of the community, but they are coming from different cultural norms and upbringings. And because of that, that's a clash. So I have found that understanding the discomfort in the times of uh, criticism, processing that, Understanding that is really very, very helpful in helping you to learn how to deal with criticism in an open, transparent, positive manner. Because a lot of the times, your discomfort may not have to do with the criticism itself, but just based on certain beliefs that you have about it. And addressing that can help you be more open, more positive about receiving feedback. Okay, the fifth tip on how to deal with critical people is not to ask for opinions if you can't take it. I have found that if you're not ready to receive um, feedback, be it positive or negative, then don't ask for it. And if you don't ask for it, people won't give it. But if you openly ask for it, you're sort of um, opening the dam and kind of giving people the ticket to say what they want to say. So if you can't take it, then don't ask for comments or opinions. So let's say if you can't take criticism about your presentation just now, 
then don't ask people on how you did. If you can't take criticism on the way you dress, uh, the clothes you bought, or the bag you just bought, then don't ask others what they think about it. Always know that when you're asking for comments, be prepared to receive a negative comment. And this negative comment may not be a bad thing, it just may be an honest, objective opinion. But first and foremost, you have to be ready to receive it. Okay, because if you're asking for comments and opinions, but you're not ready to receive it, that's not being very fair to the person. Because when you ask a question, you want other people to be transparent, honest, truthful to you. You don't want people to sugarcoat you. Okay, so know that if you can't take something, then don't ask for it. Just keep to yourself and just uh, do what you want. So if you don't want any criticism, say, on your business, on your website, on your career performance, on your studies, on your personality, then don't ask other people on what they think about it. Okay, it's that simple. So for myself, like sometimes there may be things that I do and um, I know that I just want it done this way. Like I'm not open to other ways of doing it. Maybe because of past experiences, I have known that this is the way that works for me and this is the only way I want to do it. So in that case, I don't ask for opinions because I know that whatever opinion that comes, it, it wouldn't change my decision. It also wouldn't change my mind. So I just do it anyway. But when I really do ask people for opinion, then it's when I really have uh, an intention to hear what they have to say and to possibly ap apply for their feedback. So um, you might have seen that sometimes I ask for feedback on PE, PE for the challenges, and be it for um, on the things that uh, readers want to see in the upcoming ones. And when they give the feedback, I really do act on it. I read it properly and I do enforce them. I do do the, um, for the ones that I think uh, have a good point or, or where they have good suggestions, I do apply them. Okay, the sixth tip is to disengage from the criticism or ignore them. Okay, so this is a story which I have, I believe I have shared in another web lecture about Buddha and the angry person. Okay, so I am going to share the story in the entirety here because I think in the previous web lecture, I sort of just um, related it. Okay, so here goes. Buddha was well known for his ability to respond to evil with good. There was a man who knew about his reputation and he traveled miles and miles and miles to test Buddha. When he arrived and stood before Buddha, he verbally abused him constantly. He insulted him. He challenged him. He did everything he could to offend Buddha. But Buddha, Buddha was unmoved. He simply turned to the man and said, May I ask you a question? The man responded with, well, what? Buddha said, If someone offers you a gift and you decline to accept it, to whom then does it belong? The man said, Then it belongs to the person who offered it. Buddha smiled. That is correct. So if I decline to accept your abuse, does it not then still belong to you? The man was speechless and he walked away. So what this story shares is that, yes, you may face people who give you criticism. You may face people who give you derogatory comments. You may face people who have a total disregard for who you are and what you stand for. And they just verbally insult you with the harshest words that you have ever known. But if you don't accept these comments, to whom do they belong to? They don't belong to you. They belong to the person. And the reason why this person just keeps lashing out again and again and again, criticizing you, insulting you, 
just being so unkind. It's because he or she has been living with that negative energy all this while, and that is why he or she just has to dump it on someone. And if you don't receive that, you are not sharing the negative energy of the person. You are you are leaving the negative energy still with that person. You know. So know that whatever you hear, whatever you read, whatever people try to give you, if you don't receive it, it is not yours. It is other people's. So, I may have negative comments posted on my site sometimes. I may have negative comments sent to me via my email. Sometimes, even though I don't provide my email publicly, sometimes people just try to figure out what my email is by combining my name and whatnot with several domain names, and then just send it to me. Or maybe they try to Google it, and then I just receive these lengthy texts of like、um, essays. Of negative comments,、um, reflecting more from their own personal issues and their own upbringing and you know their own baggage, emotional baggage. What do I do? I don't receive them. It is not mine. Just because it is sitting in my inbox, just because it is posted on my site, my blog, my domain name, doesn't mean that these are my stuff. These are just stuff that's posted there, and I can choose how I deal with them. So for the negative emails, what do I do? I click archive, spam. I don't even read them. How about the negative comments? I either spam them, as in I click the button that marks it as spam, or I just ignore it, or I just delete it. For these attempts that others try to put me down. I simply return these attempts back to the universe, back to them. It is not mine. So know that for whatever comments, negative comments, criticism that you receive, they are not yours until you receive them. And if you are negatively affected by them, that is because you have chosen to receive them. And then you must learn not to receive them. Learn that every single comment people make to you. Is not yours until you receive them. This is a very, very important thing that I cannot stress enough, because I think for most of us in life, we are sort of just assume that whatever people tell us, whatever people say to us, are things that we need to receive right away, and that is completely not true, because you cannot stop people from saying what they want to say. It is their right. It is their prerogative. But you can choose whether you want to receive that or not, and that is your right, your prerogative. And now we move on to the seventh tip, and the seventh tip is to show them kindness. I have found that a lot of times people, critical people, are critical because they lack love in them. They lack positivity. They lack warmth, and that's why everything they say is so cutting, so rude, so hurtful.、Um, there's this quote in the movie *Peaceful Warrior* that I absolutely love, and this quote goes like this: "The people who are the hardest to love are the ones who need it the most." And I thought that is so true, because the people who lack warmth and happiness in them. Are the people who end up being critical, and because of that, they are the ones who need this love the most. So, whenever you see someone who is being critical, you must know that you are only facing this person for this like one second. You are only seeing this comment for this one second, but this critical person is living with himself or herself, twenty four seven, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Fifty-two weeks a year, that person has to face this level of criticism, this、uh, level of、uh, critical evaluation and judgment, throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the year, constantly, never ending. And that is such a tough environment, a tough situation, such a harsh situation to live in, isn't it? So know that this person 
has been consistently under his or her own harsh judgment. And above all else, this person actually needs your love and kindness more than anything. So next time you see someone who is critical, be kind, be nice, be more supportive, be more understanding. I know that the tendency is to lash back and to defend and to retort and to retaliate, but know that this person has been retaliating and retorting with him or herself all his or her life. And what he or she needs most now is just love and kindness. Now, of course, there are times where there are people who just reject your kindness. That regardless of what you say, what you try to do, your attempts to try to reconcile, to connect, to reach out, to be kind, the person just throws it in your face and um, retorts and, and continues to be negative, even giving uh, degrading comments, insulting comments, and just continuously putting you down. And if that's the case, then really just avoid them altogether. Cut them out of your life if you can. So there are times where I have uh, people who are very unsupportive on my Facebook page. And my Facebook page is facebook.com slash Celestine Chua, which I use to connect with my readers and to really communicate with them and to connect with them. And there are sometimes... Um, certain members which are regarded as cancerous members and these people they just seemingly disagree with everything that's posted and they make very um, retaliatory type of comments and um, everything they say just feels like there's a needle there poking um, insulting and there's always a snarky comeback and for such people they are definitely not a match with the kind of community and the the message that I want to bring on the page. So what I do with them is that I just remove them and ban them from the page. And for these people, it's just too bad. Um, but if they have continuously behaved this way, then it is really not helping anybody just putting them there. For the readers who want to support, who want to see what I have to put out, it is not fair to them to have to deal with this kind of negative energy and negative messages. They didn't subscribe to the page to get that. They subscribed or they liked the page because they want to get a positive, useful stuff. And for myself, I didn't set up the page to um, get this kind of negative energy and um, naysayer attitude. I set up the page because I want to connect with the readers who care. So for these people, if they are in your life, really just cut them out altogether. I mean, try to make it work out, but if it doesn't work out, don't kill yourself for it. Like, just know that there are many people out there and life is about connecting with people who resonate with you and then just um, disassociating yourself with people who don't resonate with you. And if you always hang around with the people who are cancerous, who have a um, very draining attitude, you're really just harming nobody but yourself and the person. Because by allowing the relationship to perpetuate, you are giving the reason, to, the person a reason to continue to be negative. Because he or she knows that then there's always someone there to receive that negativity. He or she knows that there is always someone who is there ready to reply, whether positive or negative. In fact, he or she might even secretly like it subconsciously. Like that, you know, there's someone paying attention to him or her. So by continuing the relationship, you're really perpetuating such behavior. But if you end it there, um, you it's also a message to the person that, you know, you are not um, the person to receive such things. Like, you know, it's just not something you tolerate in your life. You draw your boundaries and um, it's up to the person to just deal with it and to learn for him or herself. Okay, so this is it for today's web lecture on how to deal with critical people. Eight helpful tips on how to deal with critical people. I hope you have found it useful. These are certainly the eight tips that I apply every day in my life. 
and I would say it has been very useful in maintaining my sanity <laughs> in the face of um, all the kind of different criticism I get in running my site. In terms, uh, in in fact, it has really helped me to learn a lot from everything. So, and I'm sure if you apply these tips, they are going to be tremendous for you in your growth. And these tips are definitely highly, highly useful. So, um, I think uh, one thing you can do is to download the Critical People Manifesto, and uh, I, I will provide the link in the, um, the description box of the web lecture. But uh, if you want to access it right now, you can also get the link at personalexcellence.co slash blog slash critical dash people dash manifesto. Okay, so critical dash people dash manifesto. And manifesto is M-A-N-I-F-E-S-T-O. If you want to access the critical people article, okay, the critical people article is at personalexcellence.co slash blog slash critical dash people so that's critical people with the dash or the hyphen in between and you access the article where you can read it online okay word for word so that's it for today's video as always please leave a like and a positive comment if you found this helpful it is tremendously useful for the other viewers on the page who don't know if they should invest the time to listen to this and reading your comments just really help them know that there is value in this web lecture, in this podcast, and they should really download and listen to it. So it is tremendously um, useful for me, and it will definitely be useful to other people. So do leave a like and a positive comment um, wherever you can. And I really, really appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Chua, and I'll see you guys in the next web lecture. Bye, guys.